Okay. This goes further too. If you meet people and you meet someone else, you have a partner, they're going to be on one section of your chart too. Their sun will be somewhere in your chart and that sun will put a powerful influence on you in that area that's coming from. And that may not be the same area that you're most familiar with. So that was Marika, Marika's question. So it was just, if you say your son's down in the fifth house and your partner, their son's in the, they, never mind their chart, but you know their sun sign is affecting a certain section of your chart. You can see which, if you're feeling, you can see if they're thinking or sensing or intuitive. You think either they're adding different things to you or being the same as you. It creates a different style or texture of relationships. So this is the be beginning of understanding relationships, but it's more important right now to just see it. You can, you can play, you're going to play with it anyways, but I, I want you to be anchored in seeing it for yourself and see each person in their chart, what's most natural for them and how they're supposed to be. So if you're going to be with someone and you want them to change to be the way you want them to be, they may not be able to change. They may, it's better that they're being a certain way. So are you a healing energy or not healing energy for that person? And it's not just about sharing feelings. So the, this is, I mean, this little module, this little archetype, this DNA archetype, it applies to so many, it starts expanding out to so many categories. It's so far more sophisticated than most psychological logics. Like in most psychological divisions, there's four characters or eight characters or 16 characters and everybody fits into that. But here we're seeing the four characters or the eight sections and but every planet is different energy. There's so many ways it applies. It's not so simplified as a lot of the psychological stereotypes, far more sophisticated. But if you understand them, you can lucidly look at them and go in and, and work with a person's chart around it. Now, my son's down in the, on the edge of my second and third house cusp. So I'm much more intuitive in my approach. So I got all my information. I'm motivated by astrology. I got into it, made a change in my life. Oh, well, I've been teaching it. I'm more the teacher and the writer than I am the consultant. I had to work hard to learn how to interpret it for other people on their terms because that wasn't my strong suit. I have trouble doing that for myself. So I had to learn over the years how to consult properly, how to make things work for the other person rather than just what I want them to see. So, um, the main part here is you got the pieces of you got you got a few, we got two basic categories: rising, setting, which is instigative or reactive, objective, functional, and subjective being. You got to stretch them and make these real, so you can see the real categories. And then everyone you know, you want to see where they are against these real categories. And you're always working to make that category better for yourself. And sometimes you go in opposite ways. Sometimes you come. Some things are with you. Sometimes the waves oppose you. But you don't let go of these standards, but these standards are only going to work exactly if you know your time well. If you don't know your time at all, you're having to guess which quadrant you're in, which sec, and you do it by, do, am I more instigative or more reactive? Am I more functional, more subjective? And when you start doing that, it's not so clearly defined. It's, it takes time. You have to take time. You see it, you have to reflect on it. Look at it, read about it, think about it, and sleep on it for a night or two. Keep it, let it, let it fester on it. And then eventually, you go, oh, yeah, there it is. Because sometimes you're thinking about it, and the thinking about it stops you from feeling about it. Or you're feeling about it, and you're not thinking about it, and you need to do all of them to see, to see what's really there. It, lets, it saves a lot of, um, it can make it much more lucid in working with somebody. But if someone is trying to be happy or trying to get their career or trying to build up a business, boy, you know, half of the business world, just project out positively, do business, uh, get your visualization, get your plan and actualize it. You become a millionaire and that's it. That's all above the horizon functional logic. But what happens is if by the time you keep repeatedly doing that and doing that, not everybody becomes the Donald Trump or the president. They end up being weak in character because they didn't take the time to develop their feeling, to not just think, to not just interact, to take some time to know what they want and how they feel about things and that that's as valid. So the people who have done the deepest feelings and are centered in the deep depths of their chart, they're often not the most functional. So someone who get, someone with their son down below in their chart near the IC, they're going to be more the writer or the artist or creative. They don't want to, sometimes somebody might be a secretary or a backup someone else, but they're not going to be very ambitious out there 
because they want to get their lifestyle and their personal world much more than their outer status. So you can think of this above functional reality as your outer status and functional world, but your personal, the way you live, your lifestyle and how you're living in your home, when you're at home, how you feel comfortable, how you like things, how you have things, or how you don't things, or how the things you have aren't good enough or are too good, these are all below the horizon issues. Someone who's content with very little, they don't have to do much work out there to be content. Someone who thinks they've got to have everything will never be content at home, and they have to work like crazy to try and get the home, and by the time they work to get it, they have probably never spend much time in it. So this is the um, basic puzzle. Um, Oh, that was Sandra that made the question, not, not um, Marika. But okay, this is, it's simple stuff. If you have any questions, you can give them to you can ask them now, or we can wait. We're going to have a little more time for questions in our last session of, the, of this point. But um, take some time to anchor. Once you anchor it, once you see it, this is yours, and it'll stay with you forever with astrology and. Anytime you do someone's chart, you're going back over this basics. This is the basic foundation. Once it's in place, you're not going to go that far wrong in seeing how someone needs to be. So I'm going to, I think I'm going to end the class earlier today. Um, maybe some other one might go a little bit longer, but rather than just repeating and going over and over, I present pretty much what I wanted to say. And, um, my timing sense a little bit off because I've made new new um, presentations, new new graphics, and I'm trying to follow along it. And um, it's different when you're working here than standing in front of a classroom. So my sense of timing of getting the content. This one, it takes the time. Just slow each section down. Anytime you're concerned about something, what is this? You don't see it. What's feeling? Imagine the opposite. What's thinking? And soon you'll see what the two of them, how they're distinct from each other. What's intuition? What's sensation? Sensation is being so sensitive to other people. If you're reacting to other people all the time, there's no time to be intuitive. If you're alone and aloof, you have time to have the intuitive and trust it, as long as nobody's disturbing your inner impression. So these areas can be worked with this thinking, feeling, sensation, thinking. It's so useful. But I, like I said, it's not based on the elements. It's based on this. Um, instigating, reacting, social, functional, and subjective being. And um, it's a, it's been such a useful tool to me. You can understand someone's chart before you even go further into the houses. You can get the main insight of where someone's psyche is and how the soul has come into this world and what their priorities are. Okay, um, I don't see any other questions, so I'm going to leave it here and we'll do the rest of the houses next week. Let's see. Yeah, we did that. We did that. Yeah, that's the end of this part one. So we'll end it here, and I'll talk to you all next week, and I'll send you the link to get the video. Okay, thanks. Good, good night.